That's true. Naked Palpatine. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, you think that one? Fresh out of the clone tank, nude Palpatine is my That's well, the first thing I think of when you say Dark Empire Palpatine. Boldly go where no one has gone before. Now you may be asking, why am I wearing this? Well, it's only half an outfit because I'm just wearing gym shorts underneath this. But I don't exactly have Brennan's cool chair or um, actual star. Trek uniform, but I got a nice coat, so I'm gonna be lore runner for the day. Uh, points to you if you know who I'm talking about. Amazing YouTuber, please go subscribe. Also, go if you're a Twitch person that like watch plays watch people play games. Go follow him on Twitch. Lore runner's the man, and he likes to dress up like this a lot of the time. For his ruminations, which another plugin because he's going to do way more better job than I ever will. Um, not only gonna, he already has. So, only difference is that I'm also going to be reading novels set within this universe, even if it's an alternative universe. Um, along with talking about Discovery and Strange New Worlds, which, as of this time of recording, Low Runner is not yet done. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm praising him a lot, but I'm just saying... He has videos upon videos upon videos up on Star Trek and Babylon 5, and he has done all of Star Trek Enterprise for every single episode in detail. So if that is something that may interest you, I will leave a link in the description. Please go subscribe and check him out. He's an amazing man, well worth your time. Go check him out. Um, so here we are. Um, I'm going to do what I always do with my reviews. I'm not going to try to be lore runner because I'm not as articulate or as smart or as well thought out as that man is, and I'm too lazy to do as much research as he does. So this isn't going to be really about the back, background behind any of this stuff. I'm just going to talk about the episode and how I felt about it personally, which is what I do with pretty much all my reviews because I'm not a professional reviewer. I'm just doing this for fun. He does it for a job, but I mention him a lot because I really admire him and I wish I could do my videos in a way that in, a, in such a way that he does, but. Here we are. Anyway, this is a new segment because I am going to be talking about Trek on this channel because I love Trek. Um, arguably, to the same extent, if not more, than Star Wars. Actually, if we're talking about just the films, 1 through 6, and even the TV shows 03, Clone Wars, 08, or Droids and Ewoks, without a doubt, I prefer Trek. Movies, TV show, all round better package. Now you bring the Expanded Universe into the equation and that changes things a bit. But Star Trek, I grew up being told that Star Trek was for nerds. I grew up with Star Wars, but I was told that Star Trek is for losers. And it wasn't until I think I graduated high school that I finally gave Star Trek a chance. And I started with TOS, the cheesiest one, and loved it. Then watched TNG, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. And I loved all of them. But I'm here today to do it in chronological order, even though chronological is a bit harder because of time travel and things being weird and wackadoo. Also, new shows being produced that will end up taking place earlier or later. Da -da 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 -da. It's a whole hassle. But today for you, I have just season one of Star Trek Enterprise, which it came out when I was born. So that's crazy. Um, so Star Trek Enterprise season one begins with, I'm just going to talk, talk about episode one and two in one sitting, because they're a two-parter, which is Broken Bow. What's interesting about this show, it doesn't always stick the landing with this particular premise, but the premise is sound, I think, which is that we get to deal with the early years of the Federation. In fact, at this point in time, there is no Federation, it's just Starfleet. The Vulcans and humans have interacted, they are now allies, and the Enterprise NX-01, the very first um, ship that's gonna that can go up to warp five on paper um, 
is to go explore the stars. Now, this is the early years, of course, so this is before even TOS, so, you know, it's early, it feels closer to home, feels closer to our day and age, and for that reason, it feels, you know, I think a bit more relatable. Um, and the intro. People always hate on the intro to Enterprise because it doesn't really feel like Trek, doesn't feel like a Trek opening. But again, isn't that kind of the point? We're dealing with an early age, you know? This song, it's like country or, you know, sounds like something you'd hear on the radio. But again, that's kind of the point. And I, too, will admit when I first heard it, I didn't like it. But over time, having stood over it, I quite like the intro now. And so, that's where I'll stick with that. Archer and Trip are two of the first characters we meet in this show. Absolutely love Archer. I think he's very flawed and definitely not the best Star Trek captain. But I think that's... I want to give the benefit of the doubt. And I've heard Lore Runner talk about this as well, but... I do think it was intentional. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of really sweet moments with Archer that kind of endear me to him. And there's Trip, who's, from memory, one of the best characters uh, in this show, but also alas with that. I just think Trip's really fun to watch. Um, earlier on, this in this first episode, we have this crash landing with the Klingon and these new people called the Sulabon. And because of that, it kind of jumpstarts the project, which probably would have gone a bit later of having the, X the NX-01 Enterprise leaves for space so they can return the body to the Klingon homeworld. Which, this is a little weird too, the fact that they'd be singing Klingon right now, but at the same time, there's enough time between this show and TOS where they could have bad relations. Not that they're even the best of terms on this show even. Um, but one thing I think is great and is will be a through line throughout the star show is that in the scene, Archer threatens, I mean, he's not going to do anything, but he straight out threatens to Paul because he's so fed up with Vulcans. And to Paul herself is a Vulcan one of the best Vulcan actors we've ever had, because it's very hard to play Vulcan, because a lot of people play Vulcans as these robots, emotionless, but they're not emotionless. They're, it's their thing. It's they control their passion, they control their emotion, but they still have emotions. They just try not to express them. So I think she's one of the best actors to portray a Vulcan because she does a really good job of not trying to show emotion while absolutely showing emotion through her eyes and other... Um, gimmicks and um, body movements that she does. It's a fascinating performance, and, it, and it, it's great in almost every episode. Even in the silly ones, DePaul is always a highlight. We have the Future Man um, mystery, which never really gets resolved in the show. I don't know if there's some book that gets that resolves it, but it wouldn't really matter because the books of Star Trek, unlike the Star Wars Expanded Universe, were never canon, so I can't exactly use that as a point of reference. Though, of course, if I can find a book that answers that question, I will read it because we're most likely never getting a season five of Enterprise. This show is pretty much dead in the water because the last time this show was around, I was still single digits. So, for reference, in a couple months... I'll be 23, so, you know. Um, then we get to Season 1, Episode 3. Actually, I forgot to mention. I have to say, of course this is going off of memory, but I honestly think that Phlox is one of the best doctor companions uh, or not doctor it's not doctor who um one of the best like doctors in track i, I think he's really fun I, I really love the whole denobulan sort of race and, and what that represents and everything within that and the actor just does such a good job and i i've enjoyed pretty much every scene i've seen him in even if he doesn't have much to do 
And episode three is a very Hoshi-centric episode. Um, it's okay. Not the best, but um, it's interesting. We also have um, Archer's anger and non-interference. Um, I'll be honest, some of these things I don't remember because they're so far back now. Um, sorry, that was episode three. And then episode four is Strange New Worlds, which uh, is uh, or sorry, not Strange New Worlds. That's the new show. Apologies. Strange New World. Um, this episode's okay. It gets really good near the end when this pollen is starting to affect the crew um, and they're all getting really paranoid and Tucker um, does, or Trip, sorry, does some phenomenal, um, phenomenal acting with the Paul where he starts, you know, like just getting super paranoid and claim that she's going to, you know, like harm all of them. Um, it's, it's really good. Um, episode five, I don't have too much to say outside of the fact that Tucker gets pregnant and basically assaulted and it's played off as a joke, even though, you know, I guess not assaulted, but he's at least violated. It was basically rape, even if it was to him just as harmless as, you know, holding hands. But she knew it was going to happen. He didn't. So that's a little messed up. That being said, it was okay. I don't hate really any of these episodes. I know um, Lore Runner put some lamentations on these episodes, but I... Season 1 and 2, from memory, I don't really hate any episode. I just don't love most of them. Some of them I, I do, but most of them are just, eh, you know? And the only benefit excuse I'm going to give to this show is the fact that this is the early years, so it's not going to be as exciting as later shows. But you don't have to be that exciting, you just have to have good writing, which I feel like a lot of the time they don't. Um, episode 6, Terra Nova. The aliens are humans. They were colonists. They forgot they were colonists. Several generations have gone down. They think they've lived on this planet forever, but they just haven't. It's okay. I don't have too much to say about it. It's a forgettable episode, though. Episode 7. This is one of the highlights of the season for me, which is the Andorian Incident. These are some of the OG aliens. We don't know much about them from the original series. We just know that they were one of the founding members of the Federation, which were the Andorians and the Vulcans and the Tellarites, if I'm remembering correctly, and the humans, somebody else, I forget. But, so it was cool to see them. The, the way they do the animatronics on the little antenna things is really good. Getting to see Jeffrey Combs again, pink skin, because Jeffrey Combs is, of course, Yoon from Deep Space Nine, which is my favorite Trek show. So getting to see him again is always great because he always puts in an amazing performance. And I thought Archer, there's a lot of times where Archer is not very competent in this first season, but I thought he was fairly competent in, in this show. Like, you know, he picks on to the fact that there's something amiss and they kind of play off of that and then they find the Andorian. So I thought that was great. Um, there's a part with Archer and this blanket with DePaul, and I thought it was a nice little moment of her, him trying to give her a blanket so she'd stay warm. Um, episode 8, Breaking the Ice. Archer's arrogant again, which is in a lot of this show. I don't really have too much else to say. You should go watch Little Runner's video on the episode, though. But that's pretty much all I have to say there. Episode 9, Civilization. Um, feels like a TNG episode, like an early TNG or TOS. Less than stellar. Um, it was pretty forgettable. And that's a greater sin than being bad to me. So... Yeah. Move on to episode 10, Fortunate Son. 
um, I want to give you stuff, but I, I, I don't have anything for you. I don't really like this episode. I find it rather boring. I believe this is the one where they're on the ships. Um, and it was, it was done okay. And there are certain moments within the episode that are really good. Uh, Lower Runner highlights, highlights a lot of them. But in the whole, it just is rather forgettable to me. One of the other good episodes of this season is episode 11, Cold Front, which is where we get introduced to the Temporal Cold War, which will be a bigger thing than down the line, and then we'll be kind of forgotten about. The Temporal Cold War is one of the most fascinating aspects of the show and what it brings to the table, and I was thoroughly enjoyed the whole way through. Episode 2, Silent Enemy, was a great horror episode. It was very atmospheric, very, I wouldn't say scary, but it was very tense-filled. And it was an enemy that was unknown, not really explained, and that our heroes just couldn't defeat. The only way they got out was simply by the fact that the aliens didn't want to kill them. We don't know what they wanted, they, we don't know what they did, but they got what they wanted and they bailed. And we don't really learn about these race, this race of alien ever. So they're just unknown. And as H.P. Lovecraft once said, the fear of the unknown is very, is the greatest fear. Also, we learn that Reed likes pineapple. Great. Episode 13, Phlox! Phlox! What else do I have to say? It's a Phlox-centered episode, and I loved it, personally. Um, this is the one that um, involves what he will do with the civilizations dying from this disease and, you know, Phlox is helping them because Archer's telling him to, but then it becomes a thing of if he helps them out, then these lesser, or not lesser, that's the wrong word, these less civilized, it also sounds wrong, the people that aren't on the upper food chain at the moment if these ones that are in this civilized part of the world are killed off by this disease, then this other one will become the rising um, species on the planet. And Phlox doesn't know if it's his right to interfere with that and to let nature take its course. I have nothing to say about episode 14. It's boring. Moving on, episode 15, Shadow of Pajem. Another, to me... Really good episode. I know um, Lore Runner did not approve of this episode as much, but I rather enjoyed it. Um, Archer um, is upset about T'Pol's departure, which, again, is character development, because the first episode he wanted to punch her in the face. Now he doesn't want her to go, because she's not only a useful science officer, he genuinely cares about her and her company. He doesn't want her to go. Um, Phlox and T'Pol have some wonderful moment I have a wonderful moment in this um, in this episode where she doesn't know about bringing the humans to this this sacred um, temple um, and there's this phenomenal scene it's a very little scene but to Paul's eating her lunch and Phlox is eating and he's talking about you know culture and in being inclusive and how that will further relations and he shows an example of this. It's very subtle. They don't call attention to it, but it's something you notice if you're paying attention to his movements and body language. He instinctively, not to be rude, but it just kind of happens where he, he grabs a carrot or something, or, or no, celery. And you just, may I? It, it's, it's greatly acted, and sh go ahead. So he takes it, he starts munching on it. And he keeps talking through this whole scene and through the scene. And I'm not trying to steal from Lower Order. I, I noticed this before I even... Because what I've been doing, like, r ritualistically, like, like religiously, you know, is I finish an episode, I watch his rumination. That's what I've been doing. So, but I, 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 I saw this before I watched it. So, just in case you think of plagiarism. But he, I, I noticed it. He takes the celery. And he doesn't, he doesn't call attention to it or say anything. But he grabs his celery. He puts it in some peanut butter. And takes a bite kind of fulfilling the point that he was making you know it's two different things two different you know things that don't usually go together but when put together makes a greater whole and it, it was just a great little scene between the two of them um,
I said anime moment annoying. I don't know exactly what I mean by that. Probably overacting. Um, but I don't remember what I meant by that. Um, Shran is back. He is the Andorian from the Andorian incident. Um, and... Oh. Everything I'm saying was from the episode back then. That's my bad. Shadows of the Gem is after that. Um, sorry about that. I got all mixed up. But that, that um, episode, he goes on. They, they, um, to, to Paul's leaving. Um, and they end up getting captured with these people. It really doesn't matter, but the, the highlight is when Tron comes to help them. I got the two episodes mixed up. But the other episode is also really good. That is my apologies. It's late for me. And doing these, talking about them all at once is kind of a problem. Maybe I should do half a season. Maybe I'll do that moving forward with season two. And do half a season. And then make another half a season video. So that way I remember more as I'm going through it. My bad though. Shadow Pond 1 is a perfect example of a character piece episode. And I really enjoyed it. It's not very plot heavy. The plot is they're stuck on this little ship, little shuttle pod, and they need to survive. That's the plot. But what makes the episode is the characterization and the character moments. Now, those of you who know me, you've been watching my reviews for a long time, you know I'm a character first, plot second. I mean, I prefer to have both, but if I had to take one over the other, I would always take character because I think character work is the most important to me personally. Of course, if you have a bad plot, you probably can't have good characterization. But this episode works very well, and it's one of the highlights of the season for me. This is one time we actually get to really learn a lot about Reed, you know? And, and Reed and um, um, Tucker, Trip have some good chemistry. Episode 17, Fusion, has abnormal Vulcans who are being experimental, trying to express their emotion again. It's an okay episode with, you know, interesting to see a different type of Vulcan, but the issue is that one tries to assault um, to Paul. Now, this will matter moving forward for her character, but what I do appreciate is how Archer sticks up for her. It, it, it really is a very subtle but no, show, progression of his character and where he started with her and where he is now. Episode, a, episode 18, Rogue Planet. <laughs> Way to steal a Star Wars EU title. Um, it's okay. There's visions of things. There's there's these shapeshifters. Poems. It's okay. Um, <laughs> episode 19, Rules of Acquisition. It's just a very fun episode with some um, Ferengi. Does the episode work with canonicity on if they should be able to meet Ferengi yet? Not necessarily. Though at the same time, they didn't... I don't remember... I don't, you know, just don't think about it too hard. It's Star Trek. <laughs> you know, the continuity only really matters as you get to TNG. Um, but, I don't know, it was fun. I really enjoyed it, though. So, I don't mind it that much. And, uh, Jeffrey Combs is back as one of the Ferengi. Episode 20 is Oasis. It's okay. I don't have too much to say here. Other than the fact that Odo is in it. And that elevates the episode for me. Episode 21... I didn't write the episode title. I think it's Detained. But this is genuinely a really good episode. This, you know, um, shows that the Sulaban is not so black and white. The Cabal is different from the Sulaban. And there are some good Sulaban. And, you know, it's another example of an internment camp. And it was a good moment for Archer, I think. Even though we'll have repercussions for him moving forward. Episode 22, Voxola, which is Goop Monsters. And that's all I have to say about that. I don't really care for this episode, and I don't wish to speak about it further. If you want more discussion about it, go watch Lore Runner's video. Episode 23, one of the absolute highlights of this season, if not the best episode of the season, which is Fallen Hero. This is where we have um, this Vulcan ambassador that comes on. This, this woman is a phenomenal actor. She betrays a Vulcan so well. I cannot praise this episode enough. If you watch any episode from season one, this should be one of them. Absolutely loved this episode. I really have no complaints about it. I know Lore did, but I'm not as much of a 
I'm not smart as, as he is. So, you know, the, the chase scene where they had to get to warp five, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic all the way through. I really enjoyed it. I really don't have any complaints personally on my end for this episode. I think it's one of the standouts of the season and I, and I cannot give more of my stamp of approval than that. Episode 24 is Desert Crossing and I just wrote Mr. Krabs because the guy that's the voice of Mr. Krabs is in this episode, but it does show consequences from the previous episode detained because Archer's actions in that episode affect what goes on in this episode. And for that, I think that's really cool. Overall though, the episode is just okay. It's nothing horrible. I did have fun with it. So that's about that. Um, it's okay. But I had fun with it. Clancy Brown helped. So I recommend it. Um, episode 25, Two Days, Two Nights. is a rather boring episode if, you know, this is the Karen Travis Republic Commando effect, or the, at least the last two, Order 66 and Imperial Commando, where characters are just literally talking for a couple, for the whole episode. That being said, if you enjoy the characters, then you will enjoy this. Um, the Archer ends up meeting this Tellerite, not Tellerite, Frick, the people from the detained episode, she's undercover, starts asking about the Sulabon. That's the most boring part. That being said, I still was fine watching it happen. It just wasn't the most interesting. Um, Reed and Trip uh, get scammed by these two hot women who are actually two men that shapeshifted, uh, and, and they rob them, and then they're naked. Not naked. They're in, they're in clothes, but it, it's it's a it's okay. It, it, and then there's Hoshi, um, who is trying to learn new languages. She's being really cute. I thought she's being really cute. Um, I mean, she's doing what she loves to do, which is learning new languages, but I don't know. It, it, I love that that's, it's a highlight to me that that's, that's what she decided to do with her vacation. I don't know. There's some, I, I, I thought it's such a, like a normal thing, but I really love that about her. I don't know. It was really big. I know she's the communications officer, but I, I, I thought that was great, you know, and you know, it was ultimately, you know, just a fling, just a one and done relationship with her and this dude. But I don't know, I thought they were cute. I thought it was fun. Um, it was just like normal everyday things, but it was, it was nice. So I enjoyed it. Um, nothing much happens in this episode, but it was a fun um, episode nonetheless. Not something I necessarily recommend, but it won't hurt you to watch it. Um, but yeah, um, I was going to mention the finale, but seeing as that it's a two-parter, it technically bleeds into season two, and I'd rather just talk about it as one whole. So I'm gonna wait till my season two review to talk about that. Um, the format might change a bit, but I am gonna be going through all the shows, all the seasons, all the episodes, and several books. So we'll see how this goes. I'll change the format a bit for TV shows. I'm not as used to talking about TV shows as I am to talking about novels. So I, I do appreciate you bearing with me on that. But anyway, that is it for my Star Trek Enterprise Season 1 review. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed my thoughts. If you want further, more in-depth, and just basically overall better um, discussions for each individual episode, I cannot recommend Lore Runner highly enough. Well, well, well worth your time. I hope you check them out. Um, and I hope you subscribe to see more Star Trek videos from me, as I will also be discussing several books from the um, that they've written in, in this universe. So I hope you'll check that all out with me. And until next time, guys... Engage and live long and prosper. Till next time.